I feel rather, I feel rather like the man uh, who, uh, when asked which organ he would like to keep, said he wanted to keep his navel. And when they said, why? <laughs> He said, why? What's this? <laughs> when he was asked why, he said, because I have a strange habit. I eat celery in bed, and it's a very convenient place to keep the salt. <laughs> coming up in the fog. I was, it took me three quarters of an hour to find my way from the bathroom into the lounge. Into the, <laughs> <laughs> the cat broke his ankle outside the bathroom. <laughs> That's the way it went. Now, I, I'm going to read this because it has some relation on something or other. Uh, 38, isn't it? 38, yes. Yes, well, you see, the thing, it's very strange. <laughs> but, uh, I was actually born when I was two. <laughs> <laughs> and I was alone then. <laughs> uh, uh, they didn't know. I mean, you know, uh, I was... The, I was called uh, Gerard Hoff, Gerard Hoffman. <laughs> I was called Gerard af after a, a, a cousin. He, he, uh, and I was called Hoffman uh, after Gerard. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, she was interested. Now, she was interested in brass bed knobs. <laughs> you see, and she developed a tremendous appetite for them. <laughs> <laughs> now, my father, who was a zookeeper, was obliged. <laughs> to travel around quite a bit all over the world. And I went with him, and, and a lot of other people did, and this aunt. And we were obliged, of course, to stay in hotels quite a lot. And the, I will tell you how she met her end, or her beginning. 
because we we heard most frightful groans coming from one of the hotel bedrooms, and we kicked the door open, and there she was, and she had she was trying to swallow one of the brass knobs on the bedstead. There was nothing anybody could do. We called the doctor, and in the end, we had to lift her up and spin her around and screw her off. <laughs> <laughs> I have had various jobs from time to time. This was much later. <laughs> I had various jobs. This is very interesting. Uh, I can't remember. Uh, the first job I had was with the Ministry of Pension when I attended to letters which people sent to us. You know, things like, uh, Sir, uh, I, I have been in bed with a doctor for a week. <laughs> <laughs> and he doesn't seem to be doing me much good. <laughs> if things don't improve, I must get another doctor. <laughs> Sir, this is to notify you that I have given birth to twins in the enclosed envelope. <laughs> dental inquiry, the teeth on top are fine, <laughs> but the ones on my bottom are hurting. <laughs> <laughs> and then, you know, I went uh, up to, um, yes, uh, to the Festival of Britain, when I became a guide to the tourists which was a very important job. This was long before I embarked on my uh, career as an artist and a musician. And I had to give information to the tourists who found themselves in this country for the first time and tell them what to do. You know, uh, you will oblige your chambermaid by hanging your mattress out of the window every morning. <laughs> <laughs> All London brothels display a blue lamp. <laughs> Ignore all left and right signs. These are merely political slogans. <laughs> Zebra parking places provided everywhere. <laughs> Have you tried the famous echo in the reading room of the British Museum? <laughs> a railway compartment, make sure to shake hands with all the passengers. <laughs> I then became a bricklayer, <laughs> and I've got this thing here which I must read to you. Now this is a very tragic thing, I shouldn't read it out. Can you hear me? <laughs> I'm not getting too high, Brown. <laughs> <laughs> a striking lesson in keeping the upper lip stiff is now uh, wait, wait. <laughs> is given in a recent number of the weekly bulletin of the Federation of Civil Engineering Contractors, which prints the following letter. From a bricklayer in Golders Green to the firm for whom he worked. Respected sir, when I got to the top of the building, I found that the hurricane had knocked some bricks off the top. See? <laughs> so I rigged up a beam with a pulley at the top of the building and hoisted up a couple of barrels full of bricks. When I had fixed the building, 
there was a lot of bricks left over. <laughs> I hoisted the barrel back up again and secured the line at the bottom and then went up, listen, and filled the barrel with extra bricks. Then I went to the bottom and cast off the line. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, <laughs> the barrel of bricks was heavier than I was. <laughs> What was happening, the barrel started down, jerking me off the ground, jerking me off the ground. I decided to hang on. <laughs> <laughs> and halfway up, I met the barrel coming down. <laughs> received a severe blow <laughs> on the shoulder. <laughs> I then continued to the top. <laughs> Banging me head against the beam. <laughs> and getting my fingers jammed in the pulley. <laughs> when the barrel hit the ground, it burst at its bottom, <laughs> allowing all the bricks <laughs> to spill out. I was no heavier than the barrel. <laughs> So started down again <laughs> at high speed. <laughs> Halfway down. <laughs> sharp edges. <laughs> At this point, I must have lost my presence of mind. <laughs> Barrow. <laughs> the 
barrel. The barrel then came down, <laughs> giving me another heavy blow. <laughs> and putting me in hospital. <laughs> I respect your request sick leave. turning point in my career <laughs> came a few weeks ago when I was having a, a bathe in the Highgate Pond. <laughs> <laughs> it's a strange story <laughs> because I was all on my own. This was just a few months ago. And I was sitting by the water, <coughs> I was sitting by the water, having finished my sandwiches. <laughs> <laughs> and I was making myself a wreath. <laughs> yes. A wreath from some flowers and shrubs, grass, and I was putting it on my head. You know, the way people do. <laughs> <laughs> and then, you know, you see, then I did something very silly because I forgot to take it off. And I went into the water with it on. And I swam, enjoying the... Um, the, 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 you know, the, the tadpoles. <laughs> and at the back of the Highgate Pond, a long way away, there was an old man who was shouting at me, telling me to come, come to him. I didn't know what he wanted. Uh, I, I thought I wasn't allowed to swim in this particular part. So I, I swam across to him, not to ask him, but he said a most extraordinary thing, <coughs> which has a great significance on everything. He said to me, I'm so sorry, sir, but I thought you were my father. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'm going to... You work that out. <laughs> <laughs> How much time do I have? <coughs> An hour? <laughs> we have to be home by midnight. I don't know whether there's time for you to tell me... to tell you my... The, the, my Turkish bath story. Do you want to hear that? <laughs> I have here some letters written in answer to holiday inquiries uh, which we wrote to the Dolomites and we received some replies in English from Tyrolean landlords. <laughs> we have ample garage accommodation for your char. <laughs> <laughs> In the close village, you can buy jolly memorials for when you pass away. <laughs> I send you my prizes. If I am dear to you and your mistress, she might perhaps be reduced. <laughs> We are also noted for having children. <laughs> <laughs> Dear madam, this was to my wife. <laughs> I am honorable <laughs> to accept your impossible request. <laughs> Unhappy it is, I here have not bedroom with bath. A bathroom with bed, I have. <laughs> I can, though, give you a washing. <laughs> with pleasure. 
in a most clean spring with no person to see. I insist that you will like this. <laughs> Honoured. This is another letter to me. <coughs> I am amazing diverted by your entreaty for a room. <laughs> I can offer you a commodious chamber. <laughs> with a balcony imminent <laughs> to the romantic gorge, and I hope you want to drop in. <laughs> a vivacious stream washes my doorsteps. <laughs> So do not concern yourself that I am not too good in bath. I am superb in bed. <laughs> Sorrowfully, I cannot abide your auto. Standing, this is, this is it, having freshly taken over the propriety of this notorious house. <laughs> I am wishful that you remove to me your esteemed costume. <laughs> Standing among savage scenery, the hotel offers stupendous revelations. <laughs> there is a French widow in every bedroom. Affording delightful prospects. <laughs> I give personal look to the interior wants of each guest. Here you shall be well fed up and, ag <laughs> and agreeably drunk. Our charges for weekly visitors are scarcely creditable. <laughs> Peculiar arrangements for gross parties. <laughs> Our motto is ever serve you right. <laughs> thirty-eight, huh? <laughs> Life starts at thirty-eight. Now, for me, life is going to start now, and I'll tell you when. If I see this government encouraging the arts in this country and spending their money on things like opera and concerts and new music, the sort of thing <laughs> that people don't do anymore, it wants some crank like myself to put on some wild concert. People come to that. But if you put on a concert of music by Honegger or Schoenberg or Bartok, the public keeps away. And it's up to you, to you, all of you, to attend these functions, to encourage the arts and see that the money is spent on things like an opera house. Do you know you know that I, I, I was told the other day that the, uh, that the, uh, the Hamburg town council spends more money on the opera alone than the arts council spends on the entire arts in Great Britain. Yes. There are more in Hamburg than are in London. I don't know. I don't know. Are there? <coughs> that may well be. But then, take it this way. Look at the money we spend on armament. 
Look at the money we devote to senseless things. And for me, I'm not talking about you, I'm talking about me now. <laughs> for me, for me, life is going to start when I find myself living in a proper civilized society with no color bar and no race riots. And that's not the worst, but in a society where young people stand up when they feel that some injustice is done, because they don't. People don't stand up. They will not stand up. They sit back and they say, oh, this is a great pity, and that's that. But that's when life is going to start for me, when I find people standing up and, 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 and do something about the things they feel strongly about, these appalling things. That's all. <laughs> <laughs>